Next question is from <clears throat> It's Lean. What are your best tips for gut health? Uh, rule number one, maintain good motility. Okay, what that means is you want to have at least one uh, full bowel movement a day, if not, you know, two bowel movements a day. Now, I know a lot of people listening don't have a bowel movement every day. And in fact, even That's Western crazy. medicine doctors will tell you it's perfectly normal to, to you know, only poop every other day or once every three huh? days. Um, but really? Yeah, yes, they will. And the reason why they say that is because so many people are like that, that they're like, oh, it's perfectly normal. Hmm. Now, here's why it's important. When you're not getting rid of waste uh, on a regular basis, that can cause a situation where bacteria starts to back up and build in your small intestines. And you'll get something called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, we didn't know much about this not that long ago. Uh, but today we find that a majority of irritable bowel syndrome issues is due to uh, SIBO. So when they test people, so irritable bowel syndrome used to be this catch-all phrase where doctors didn't know what the hell was going on. So like, oh, you got stomach problems. We did, you know, we we did an endoscopy. We did a colonoscopy. Everything looks healthy. Can't figure out what's going on. Irritable bowel syndrome just mm. means you ever. It, it really, there's no cure. It's just here's your problem. You have a, a sensitive gut. But now when they go in and they test people with IBS or IB, you know, IBD or whatever. What they find now is that a majority of them have this bacterial overgrowth in their small intestines, and what helps prevent that from happening is good motility. So I would say, number one, eat in a way that promotes that, and if you find foods that reduce that, then maybe stay away from those. And by the way, if you're prone to diarrhea, that doesn't necessarily mean you have good motility. This is something else I learned. Oftentimes, diarrhea is also a sign of constipation because the body's getting rid of fluid but the real waste is kind of sticking and staying stuck there. Now, how do you get good motility? Uh, individually, there's going to be foods that might bother you. Stay away from those. You'll probably know what they are. Diversity. Uh, eat lots of well-cooked vegetables. This is important. If you want to improve your motility, vegetables can help, but cook them well. That makes it work even more. If you just eat a bunch of raw vegetables or not that much cooked vegetables, you might actually find more gas and, and, you know, distension and bloat. Mm. But if you boil them or cook them really well, that actually breaks them down enough to where you can eat a large amount and you have better motility. I think one of the keys to to gut health is is to first figure out what is potentially invading, right? So that normally if someone has, you know, irritable bowel syndrome or gut issues or SIBO, it's like there is something, there's something that is affecting that, that you're consistently eating. And more often than not, it's the things that you gravitate towards the most. In fact, D Doug, is the intuitive guide still, are we still half off on that? Yes. Okay. So the, the intuitive guide, this is, I mean, I recommend everybody does this, even if you don't have gut issues, but to eliminate um, most of the things that are most commonly, uh, you know, problems for most people that have gut issues, we show you how to kind of eliminate that and then how to also slowly introduce and then what signs that you're looking for. What right. am I trying to pay? The, and you know, I think the first step to having a healthy gut is becoming aware of how your body can express it and understanding that we're all very individualized, right? So, you know, I I may have we like let's say uh, Justin and I both uh, let's just say avocados irritate both of our guts, but his he may express it through headaches, uh, and I might have my psoriasis flare up, right? So. You, you, you can't just pair a food or pair an issue with, you know, somebody else's symptom that they see. You've got to know what you, all the different things that you could be looking for and then paying attention to when you introduce these foods into your diet, are they affecting you in any of these ways? Right. I wanted to ask you, Sal, so based off of all this, like you mentioned about SIBO, does that mean I may be full of shit? Yeah. <laughs> I know you are. Okay. No, um, SIBO comes back too. So if you're somebody that's had it before- and then you get better, and then your symptoms come back. You may have to treat the SIBO before. By the way, there are uh, antimicrobial um, herbs that are over the counter that studies show are just as effective as antibiotic med medications for treating SIBO. So you don't have to take antibiotics if you think you have uh, SIBO issues. But yeah, uh, good motility. Stay away from foods that you know irritate your gut. Drink. Be, stay hydrated. That's actually, believe it or not, the number one reason why people have motility issues. They don't drink mm -hmm. enough water. Sometimes it's increasing your water intake. Um, we'll have you, you know, 
pooping or whatever uh, more often. Artificial sweeteners often, in my experience, cause problems uh, for people if they start to consume lots of sucralose uh, or aspartame. So you might want to you know, stay away from those things as well. And then the common offenders that Adam was referring to are gluten, dairy, soy, flour, nuts, um, and uh, egg whites. Those are the – and legumes. I mean, I know it sounds like a lot, but those are the common offenders with gluten, dairy – and uh, and uh, nuts and soy being the most out of that category. So you can even just cut them out. And when I say cut them out, they have to be completely out, completely out of your diet, not even have a little bit, do that for 30 days, and then introduce one by itself for a week, see how you feel. If you feel good, introduce the next one for – it's a tedious process – but up until now, there's nothing that has come close to being able to identify food intolerances uh, quite as effectively.